And hello, I'm Dave Wagner. Welcome to another episode of Come On Down with Rich Fields right here. And Dave, the yeah. dude. Yeah, you are uh, wearing more swag. <laughs> more here. swag, Obviously you know. Collected a fair amount. I, uh, you got such a kick out of last week's. Yeah. I thought I'd go through the closet and start seeing how much more I had, and I, I have a lot. I mean, this is full on hoodie, man. I mean, they did not, they did not uh, chin set up. No. See how thick this thing is. It and is. for California, nice. right? Ah, very odd. Well, it's odd that he has it on because uh, right now we're in record warmth here in the state of Florida. <laughs> so I'm taking it off, man. I'll be sweating like a pig if I don't. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's definitely warm out there. We had a nice weekend, and hope you did too. So absolutely. Did you? Hey, I got something to show you. Uh, okay. Last week was it? Last week. We talked about uh, Adam West and Batmobile. Batman. Mm -hmm. Batmobile. I wanted to show you something yeah. okay. here. Uh, I got home and somebody had sent me this. We oh wow! We talked about the Batmobile. Yeah. You said, "Is that one of the originals or is it a replica?" I said, "It's one of the originals. This is a replica." Wow. On Classic, a 1966 Batmobile replica. Current bid is seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow. Wow. For a replica. <laughs> For a replica, Dave. <laughs> Is that nuts? <laughs> it is insane. That was so much fun. Uh, you talking about your uh, adventures with Adam West and, yeah. and uh, blowing up, uh, you know, Television City in Hollywood. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 you don't hear you say it. It sounds <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it was uh, it was fun. It was fun. To watch Figuratively. All that. Yes. Yes. So Figuratively. If you if you haven't uh, seen that episode, uh, you can go back and take a look at it. We should remind people where they can take a look at the, uh, the yeah, videos absolutely. and photos. Absolutely. Please. Right, the more you can promote that, the better. All right. Remember. Uh, first of all, you, know, you can listen to this on all your normal podcast uh, providers here. We're talking Apple, we're talking Spotify, Spotify. all that kind of stuff. <coughs> and most of the, uh, the videos and photos, really all of them that we air on this show, uh, you can see by going to our Facebook page. That is Facebook.com slash Come On Down Podcast. Again, Facebook.com slash Come On Down Podcast. A lot of good stuff. This show it really is about um, bells, buzzers, anything game show related, but also about Rich's time in Hollywood. There's a lot of crazy stuff that I, I'm sure you've witnessed some of it, a few yeah. game shows. But at home sometimes, you know, we don't really know all the behind the scenes stuff. There was something when I was looking through the internet that I wanted to ask you about here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> These posts where people say there was like a mysterious green and purple wheel. <laughs> I've never seen that. I don't know what that's about. What is that? Uh, for folks that may not have heard about this, yeah. we're talking about the iconic, the big wheel sure. that, that you spin to get in the showcase showdowns. And we've all seen it a billion times. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's beautiful. It's, it is. It's, it's been around it's for... All, it's all blinged out and yeah. it looks perfect. It, it looks yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I've had promo shots with this with this wheel. Uh, uh -huh. I, I, I was the big wheel uh, for <laughs> Halloween one year. I mean, I mean, that was a lot of what fun. Kind of, what, we just have a top hat on. What is that all yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Kind of like, like a Monopoly man. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> kind of like the guy from Monopoly. And again, yeah. I mean, every photo shoot you can think of, uh -huh. it's always featured, you know, <laughs> the big wheel. Yeah. You know, so uh, as a matter of fact, Barney Stinson, Neil Patrick Harris yes. even spun the big wheel on an episode of, of um, How I Met Your Mother. I was so, kidding. I didn't know that. Oh, you got to watch it. Oh, really? Oh, go to YouTube, uh, search <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. Yes. The episode is called Showdown. Oh. And it's all about Barney going to The Price is Right. No kidding. It was one of the uh, last things that Bob and I taped. Uh, prior to Bob uh, retiring, yeah. and it's fantastic. The storyline, not just because I really? worked at the Price is Right, yes. because I, you know, I'm a Price is Right lover. The storyline, Dave, is fantastic. <laughs> I won't give it all away, but Barney. Yes. Uh, if you ever watched How I Met Your Mother, Barney, you know, he talks about his mom, his mom, his mom. He never mentions his dad. Mm -hmm. So this particular episode, Barney is going to go meet his dad who he thinks is Bob Barker. Oh, that's too funny. Because one time when he was a little kid in front of the TV watching The Price is sure, Right, sure. he turned around to his mom and said, Mom, where's my dad? And she said, um, it's that guy right there. Oh. And she points to the TV and I think they're spinning the big wheel. Bob's on TV. And, and so he makes it his lifelong quest to go meet his dad, Bob yeah, Barker. Bob Barker. Yeah. It, it is spectacular. Really? What, it's a, what did Bob think of this plot? Bob loved it. It did was he? a tribute to Bob was it? and his 50 years in television. Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Barney says a little something about that at the very end. I won't ruin it if you haven't seen it, but uh, I know it's out there because residual checks still keep coming in for it. Oh, okay, Plays on airplanes a lot. I know that because <laughs> I get that airplane check. Yeah, that, yeah. that 12 cent check. <laughs> no, they're not quite 12 cents. Yeah, I just got my latest Waterboy check, and I think it was 30, 38, 40, 
eight forty eight dollars something. Forty eight bucks. Well, you're, you're still doing good. Yeah, I mean it's still on you know all that. Kind well, of thing. everybody's seen the front of the wheel. Yeah, let's and, take and they always ask. They always say, Rich, you know what's behind the big wheel? Can you show us what the what looks like from oh, behind? And there that. it is. What is that? What's it's written on the back. It's gutted. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff written on the back, Dave. Really? There's. <laughs> There's all kinds of I'm stuff. Surprised you didn't have to edit it. All, all, all kinds long. of graffiti. No, yeah. not not like not oh, okay. like bad words or anything. Oh, but, okay. but just you know, like I think every model who's worked there has signed it. I've signed it. Rod yeah. Roddy signed it. Yeah. I think Bob has signed it. Just everybody. You know, you walk yeah. by it and you're like, hey, wow, I haven't signed it yet. And you, you just scribble oh, wow. something on there. Oh. So that's what the back of the wheel looks like. Completely gutted. Yeah, it doesn't look very fancy, does it? Right. I mean, it looks very basic. Right. So it's you know you can see the electronics hanging yeah. from the uh, left side there, so it lights up and everything and. And again, uh, people always ask, you know, oh, there's a guy back there. He's yeah. slowing the wheel down. Right, right. Except, no, because there's people off stage watching to make sure there's nobody behind well, that. You wheel. got the game show. I mean, you got the gaming commission. Right, right? exactly. You got well, those folks all over the place. Is there a secret to that? I mean, can did you ever try I, it out and see if you could? I have tried it many times. Number one, it's really super heavy. Is it crazy heavy? But you can see people really you, you, almost jump up. You on have to yeah. to, oh, really? to get it going. Yeah. It's that heavy. But a secret. Uh, it has to go around at least once, so right. that's difficult. You could possibly get it to go around and stop again, sure. but to get it to go around, you know, at least once, and then a second time right. to right. stop it, difficult, difficult. Okay, so. I'm, I'm asking on behalf of Atish, our, our uh, game show aficionado <laughs> producer, who, who's not over here again today. I mean, I don't know why he avoids us during these shows. I, I don't know either, but uh, uh, maybe because we talk about it all the time, I'm not so sure. But there's a picture front and back of, of the iconic wheel, and it looks so pretty out front. And by the, by the way, uh, you see the red carpet there? I do. That's the very um, red carpet. I told you it had the big daisy, the Mark Goodson daisy on it that I that's the, snagged. That's the carpet. You got, go back to that and, for and, a second. And, Let me see that and gave to the Mexican guy because I couldn't haul it down to Florida. I mean, yeah, I mean, and you you had that all prettied up and cleaned yeah, up and yeah. you made it look beautiful. Yeah. Is there just one daisy on it? Just one daisy. That's where the contestant stands uh -huh. after they've spun okay. the wheel. Gotcha. So they're the reigning champ until, you and know. And that's a pretty big piece of carpet. It's there, right? huge, yeah. folks. You don't even realize. So rolled up, that thing was a few hundred pounds. Wow. It's really thick. Wow. I mean, behind it is this thick burlap, and uh -huh. it's, it's all sewn, stitched through the burlap. I mean, it's a really quality piece of carpet with a nice yellow border around it, and then that yellow inset daisy. Wouldn't it be great to reach out to the guy who has it and see if we can I, track him I, down? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I wish I knew where he was. Go I mean, live with him. I remember his place. I, I, I could go to the place where we were, but whether or not he's still there is another right, story. Right. But, uh, oh, what a great story, though. We yeah. should send. We should send somebody. We should hire somebody to go to that address. Just to, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, brother. By the way, do you own the Price Is I mean, Right? If you know approximately where it is, you know, yeah, we've, I do. We've got him. We've got him. It's off Lancashire Boulevard. We can figure that out. It's off Lancashire Boulevard in North Hollywood. Uh, but about, you don't want to give it away too much because well, it's, it's a big area. <laughs> it's a big area. It's about a half a block south of Oxnard. Oh, okay. Uh, Avenue, Boulevard yeah. Avenue, Boulevard's okay. the other way on uh, Lancashire Boulevard. Okay. Yeah. So I, I know where the guy lives, but yeah. nonetheless. So I think I've kept you in suspense long enough. Some yeah. we came in. We came back from a break, and we were walking through the hallways going into stage 33, right, and right. we see this. Oh wow! Oh my! Um, I just wanted to listen to you for a second. Was this? Oh my! Was this the the real wheel? I this, mean, this is the original we real wheel. Boy, wow. say that original, original real real wheel. wheel. Yeah, right. Stuff. <laughs> so crazy, just nuts. Uh, um, it, it, it was everyone who saw it. Huh? Was like what? Were they like aghast? I mean, it's like, everyone. Oh my goodness! This everyone. is so ugly. Is uh, that what they thought? Look hard to the right. You, you can barely see some guys sitting back there underneath a, some stair a stairwell. Uh -huh. That's where all the the stage hands and grips okay. kind of yes. sat right. uh, as they were waiting for shows to start. They've okay. they've been working all night, so they've already loaded stuff in. I see. And the wheel you only roll in at mid break, you know, right. for the one spin off, and then at the end sure. for the second. So uh, they're sitting back there and. Um, as the story goes, and I've heard p bits and pieces from a lot uh -huh. of people, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put the story together with all the bits and pieces. So, Drew Carey, <clears throat> we we had been out on a on a two week break. I can't remember why. I think it was Christmas break, mm -hmm. and this would have been 
this would have been, God, I'm trying to remember what year and season it happened. And, and, and again, folks okay. know this, but Roger's already off the show. Okay. So they kept Roger one season with Drew. Now he's off the show. So it had to be, we had to have gone through summer hiatus and have started taping again and probably took a break because of Christmas. That's okay. the only thing I can yeah. think. Yeah. So I do know we came back after a two-week break, and this wheel is sitting in the hallway and Drew Carey comes walking in and guys sitting over here underneath the stairs are like, Drew, <laughs> what the F did you do to the wheel? Laughing. And Drew's like, what? You're kidding me. Is this the real wheel? And Drew was mortified. Was he? Driving back from Las Vegas uh, one night, two, three in the morning, yeah. uh, Drew told me that he absolutely was sickened when he saw that somebody had painted the wheel. Huh. It was not his idea. And the first thing he said was, who did this and why? And it apparently it got passed up the chain, like like the new executive producer said, oh, it was the showrunner. Oh, and who was the new executive producer? Mikey Boy. Oh, uh, Mikey Boy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> it went on to Jeopardy. <laughs> it went on to Jeopardy yeah. and then went off of Jeopardy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Mikey Boy says, uh, the, the showrunner. Did everybody call him Mikey Boy? No, I just okay. do that out of <laughs> disdain for the guy. Uh, uh, so he says, the showrunner made the decision, yeah. which was uh, at the time was a guy named Sid Vintage, okay. a Fremantle executive. Uh -huh. yeah. um, so Drew asks Sid Vintage, and Sid says, apparently, according to Drew, Roger Dobkowitz made the order before he left the show. So they blamed it on Roger. Yes. So Drew calls Roger Dobkowitz yeah. r rather angrily. Uh -huh. And Dave, I'm going to let you read what Roger wrote to me this morning about the wheel. Oh, wow. So the first I heard, this is from Roger, the first I heard of the purple wheel was from Drew himself. I had already been off the show for a few weeks when Drew called me at home, wanted to know if I ordered the wheel to be painted. I told him no, and that it was most likely Sid Vintage, a totally inept executive. Uh, uh, in my humble opinion, he says. Uh, he sounded quite mad and told me that the wheel was ugly. That was the last uh, I, I heard from him. Uh, the live show wheel is a little smaller than the show's wheel. Repainting the wheel would probably just be an overnight thing. Oh, interesting. The reason why he mentions the live show wheel being, um, he's talking about the Price Right Live that goes out on. Oh, gotcha. Goes out on the yeah. road. It's it's smaller. Yeah. It's was that the live show wheel? Or it was it? not. And yeah. and a lot of people online think that was the live show wheel. Oh, I see. They also think that we used the live show wheel in the interim while this one was being redone. Oh. And I don't recall that, and Roger doesn't recall that either. What we all recall is that the wheel was absolutely painted. We did five, we taped five shows, yeah. one week's worth, and it was sandblasted and repainted overnight. You know, I, <coughs> listen, I, I get, you know, people want to put their own mark on things, but n number one, you don't fix something that's not broken, and, and secondly, why would you choose those colors? Insane. Well, the entire set, there's the two wheels back to back. Right. The entire set that season had been changed to this oh, ugly I green <clears throat> and hideous purple. Yeah. I'll just show you a couple Somebody's of different into sets. That, aren't they? Yeah. And um, that's why it was changed. Huh. So, but to change the iconic wheel yeah. was a whole other story. I mean, that's just nuts. Right. And so they, uh, the edict came down from Drew. Look. Uh, Drew told me in the car, here's what Drew told me on the way back from Vegas, another quote from Drew. He, uh, I wish I was on the other side because, you know, he's, he's driving the car and he looks to me this way, right. but I'll look to you this way, and he says, Man, I don't want to be the guy that ruins the prices, right? I don't want to be that guy that starts changing stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's very telling to me about all the changes that have sure. taken place on sure. the prices. And right. how long he'd be, had he been on the prices right at that point? Maybe a season. So I mean, obviously at that point, Maybe he, about a season and a half, possibly. If this is Christmas of his second season, I'd say about a season gotcha. and, so and, and a half. He's already following a legend. The last thing he wants to do is to change out the, you know, the set. Exactly. Yeah. And we were told when it was sitting in the hallway. Uh, that morning, apparently, uh, Drew had already come in and said, get that, you know, thing out of here. And it was nothing we can do, Drew. We have to use it. And he was like, oh, well, then you need to paint it, like, right away. So uh, they decided to go ahead and, and, and repaint the wheel. But as it sat in the hallway, we were told, everybody was told, do not take pictures of the wheel. Oh, wow. 
do not take pictures of the wheel. We don't want this getting out. Who took pictures of the wheel? Well, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this is Jeff Thistead, my buddy Jeff Thistead. He was a oh, wow. uh, a uh, a uh, production uh, coordinator on the uh -huh. show. Okay. Jeff Thistead, by the way, is going to be on Come On Down. Uh, this is the guy that married a model. Wow. He married a Price is Right model. Uh -huh. He yeah. married uh, Rebecca Mary. Okay. And uh, th it's quite the story. So Jeff's going to be on the show coming up. But uh, all of us. Got a heck of a head of hair, don't all, <laughs> <laughs> all of us. Uh, so we all started taking pictures. Yeah. You know, <laughs> screw them. I mean, <laughs> you know, I had heard when I began to look into this and in my investigative background, I began to Love look it. into the whole thing. I didn't think Roger did it, but what I determined is that this guy, um, and he's a bit of a jerk, uh, named Rich Fields, um, <laughs> gave, gave the go-ahead go on this. Uh, I did not. I did no, not give did the go-ahead on okay. that. Uh, and, I believe you. Uh, nobody liked it. No one. Yeah. No, no one on the show liked it. No, nobody backstage liked it. When it was first rolled out the very first time, uh, the audience gasped. <laughs> gasped. Okay? <laughs> I am going to play you. A short piece of video. This is courtesy of Fremantle Media. Okay. By the way, if, uh, I told you that CBS has thrown uh, all of their support behind you and I in the show. That's great. Uh, so they have cleared anything and everything for us to be able to use. Uh, I called Fremantle Media. I got, finally got a hold of their lawyers, yeah. and uh, they have given us a carte blanche on uh, using any any video from the show That's whatsoever, whatsoever, up to five minutes. Up to five minutes. The piece I'm going to show you is five minutes, seven seconds, but I'm going to get out of it. Yeah, you're going to dump out early. <laughs> so Dave and I need to plug yeah. in to uh, hear what's going on. You folks at home are going to enjoy this. This is the very first time the wheel made its appearance on The Price is Right. And listen to Drew Carey's... And this is the ugly wheel. This is the ugly wheel. And listen to Drew Carey's disdain for the wheel. <laughs> We're not hearing audio from the purple wheel. Hang on a second. We've got to hear this. Yeah, we will. Hang on. Give me two seconds. I'll rewind. Let me cut to us real quick. Mm -hmm. um, this is what you call a live podcast. Wow, why can't I find this? Shoot. I had it playing before the show, and it's just not... Playing now. I wish we could show you what Rich is doing behind the scenes here. It's a little hard to see. Oh, you guys are looking at black. I'm sorry. I don't see it. I don't see the audio for that piece of video. Doggone it. I'm sorry, Dave. But okay. I'll walk you through it. Okay. Okay. We're going to so, show the video. Yeah, we're we're going to show the video, and I'll have to. Uh, Maybe we can do this next time. We can we can air the clip. Yeah, we okay. can. We'll, we'll definitely show it next time. But Drew says, "Welcome back to the Price is Right, everybody. Uh, nothing's wrong with your television sets. Nothing wrong with the color. Uh, yes, you are looking at an ugly big <laughs> wheel, big purple and green wheel. We don't know who paid in it. We don't know why. But I'll tell you right now, uh, you're going to see it for five episodes, and it's going to be gone. I guarantee you." and the crowd exploded. The in-house studio audience just exploded. They were like, hey, thank God, because when they rolled it out, there were audible gasps and boos. Yeah. And uh, so he says, okay, you're going to spin the big wheel. Megan, you're going to be the first one to spin the big, ugly purple <laughs> wheel. Here we go, Megan. I want to keep this rolling because this is kind of funny. You have to get the wheel all the way around. Yeah. It's got to make at least one complete turn. You get a dollar. You know, you get a thousand dollars, and then you get a second spin on the wheel. You get five, five or fifteen. So you get five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. You get the dollar. You get ten thousand, and there it goes. It goes all the way around. And what happens on the first spin of the ugly big new wheel? Oh my gosh, a dollar! <laughs> she got a dollar. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> that big ugly wheel brought her some good luck, didn't it? Oh. We were all sick. We were all sick yeah. because we were like, you no! Wanted to, you wanted to fail miserably. Yes, you wanted to fail miserably. Not on the first ro you know, roll of the thing, a dollar. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm sorry I didn't have the audio for you. Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, that, that was Drew's... Uh, that was Drew's introduction to, for all of us to the big wheel. It was, it was something else. It was just really crazy. Well, um, yeah. So that's what happened. And, and to fill in for folks, you know, who've always, uh, there's so many things on the internet and people pretend like they really know the answers sure. and they pretend like they really know the stories or like they're an insider. But there you are. That's really what happened. 
and uh, the, the next time we came back from to tape uh, it was it was done and gone. It, it looks like it would be more complicated to paint to me than an overnight job. Well, it, but it, 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 it was complicated because the whole wheel has to come out of that. I see. The entire wheel has to come out of that system. Huh. So let me let me go show you again and see what I'm talking about. The entire spinning wheel yeah. has to come out of this casing oh, yeah. because the the sides of the wheel, as you can see, the sides of the numbers are all painted as well. Oh, the insides yeah, yeah. of the numbers are painted. Like the shading it, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all these little triangles in there uh, so the whole thing has to come out it, it was just a, a painstaking process but that's the cool thing that I always loved about Hollywood that there's enough money to get enough guys yeah. to stay all freaking night long <laughs> and get that done they did it over a weekend but nonetheless yeah. it was all painted and completely dried and shellacked, you know, the clear coat over sure. it, so, and it was beautiful by the time. And it didn't even smell like fresh paint didn't it? when we came back. No, it, it was dried like, I don't know how they did it, but must have put fans on it. But Did they ever figure out who was behind this? Um, I'm sure, I don't know if Drew ever found out who was behind it, but I think we all know who was behind it, so... There you go. Hey, this past weekend, <laughs> done with the big wheel. Yes. Uh, this past weekend on Saturday was Roger Dobkowitz's birthday. No kidding. I'm not How kidding. How old is Roger? He looks really good. He, he, Roger looks great. He, he, has, yeah. he has really looked good over the years. Here's a couple of pictures of mm -hmm. Roger. And as we go through these pictures of Roger just being happy and having fun, see if there's one thing that you, you that stands out to you as being uh, uh, there, uh, the same in every single photo. He always have something in his hand, doesn't he? <laughs> and what, what is in his hand as, as we roll through these? Any idea? A uh, martini? No, I looked up one point. No, I uh, let me see. What is that? What is? Uh, you tell me, because it's a margarita. Oh, it's, I, okay, margarita. Yeah, Makes Roger's sense. favorite, the margarita. Yeah. So I, I just collected as oh, many photos as oh, I, I could of Roger yeah. with a margarita. Obviously, Roger on the show some thirty. How many years? Five, six. Does he not smile when he has a margarita out of his hand? Oh, Roger's always smiling. He's one of the <laughs> happiest men uh, I have ever met. He's one of the kindest, sweetest souls oh. I have ever met in my life. Wow. He's a really, really nice guy. I mean, he is responsible for your career. Absolutely. Yeah. If Absolutely. he had not picked up the phone that one day. Okay, here we go. Roger Kurt Dobkowitz. Roger Kurt Dobkowitz. How about that? Born July 30th, San Francisco, California, uh -huh. 36 years in The Price is Right, five wow. Emmys, but he really had six, remember he told us? That's right, because yeah, Bob gave him one, right? God, Bob personally gave him uh, one of Bob Barker's Emmys for uh, Best Host, so happy wow. birthday, Roger Dabkowitz from everybody at Come On Down. We, we love you, Roger. We want to have you back on the show ASAP. Yeah, he's funny. He's got a wry sense of humor, too. I love how he does. Know, he's sort of understated in that. And, and he, sort does. Of, uh, he does. He does. Yeah, you can tell. He's got a, he's um, a good sense of humor. This actually, this next thing we were going to talk about about actually uh, was a news story mm. and I think you might have even reported it okay. on it on the nightly news okay. this is straight from 10 Tampa Bay okay uh, the hit game show Jeopardy has reportedly settled on a permanent successor or or two and their familiar faces we have seen these these two right here uh, we know Ken Jennings on the left and then and we know the, the yeah. actress on the right Miam Bialik right mm -hmm. Miam Miam Bialik but uh, you know it's mixed it's mixed on the on the internet as yeah. to as to whether people you know whether they like well, who they like you know yeah. as a matter of fact yeah. um, Ken has been pretty public saying I really didn't want the full time job sure. so not that he got the full time job they're right. splitting things up you know uh, one's going to do the regular nighttime show another one's going to do specials and and so on and so yeah. forth but uh, but on the internet man take a, take a look at some of the things that that, that, that people write oh here, my, oh here, my goodness here you go. Uh, I, I'm reading this cold, so hopefully it will. Yeah, it's from Keith Blank. Okay, uh, about the Jeopardy decision, uh, Rich, if you ask me, I think Balak got the better of the deal, uh, deal long term for both, so not going anywhere for a while. He wants to do other things like game shows like The Chase, so he'll likely do half the regular Ken. shows with her. This Ken Jennings, right? Uh, she gets the tournaments in primetime, so we'll get the primetime stuff. So the show is branching out, so she will get Celebrity Jeopardy 2 and primetime specials. I think she made out better. Did, does does Keith know this, or is Keith speculating, or do we know? This was after the decision was okay. made. So, yeah. well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it um, it is obviously a coveted position. A lot of people wanted this. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some people who wanted it, 
and then when they came back, they, they kind of negated them. When when Mike mm -hmm. uh, got the got the gig or gave himself mm -hmm. the gig, mm -hmm. um, you know, there were people who said, nah, "I'm not interested in it anymore." Yeah, there were some good candidates. Lavar Burton. I, I I threw my whole support behind Lavar. He's really a sweet guy. Number yeah. one, and yeah. I thought he did a fantastic job in his audition. Yeah. Number two. So uh, here's another one for you, Mike Say. Okay, Mike. Uh, lost interest in the show since this uh, host scandal, as I'm certain many other viewers have. The studio has tarnished Alec, Alex Trebek's uh, memory with this disaster. The continued gross mismanagement and continued effort in making questionable decisions like this speaks volumes. Uh, yeah, people. Uh, I wonder what they lost. Kind of strongly. Yeah. I wonder what they lost in that whole uh, Mikey debacle. I, don't know I wonder if they lost advertisers. I wonder if they lost viewers, or is the show so solid, you know, that it sustained through that? I mean, it's back on its feet now. I would say, yeah. so uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe everybody that did leave came back. It seems like Ken Jennings lent some credibility to it because here's a guy who yes. is, a, you know, a contestant now host, and and uh, he's legendary. Yeah, and he's a smart guy, and, that, and I think people in the end kind of like, well, if somebody's going to be asking questions. I at least want them to have some sense of what the answers might be. Right. Get a sense with Ken Jennings right. that he I mean, knows probably a lot so of answers. So smart, so brainy. Yeah. Second part to that was somebody okay. else, Judy. Oh yeah, this is Judy Gerritsen Colson. Nobody can ever replace Alex, ever. Um, uh, but these two do a good job. Yep. And another one from Jamie yep. Och o o Ochi Ochionero. Ochionero. Uh They definitely captured my audience with her. Huh. Okay. So see, you know, it depends yeah. on who you talk to. Yeah. And, um, as to, as to what's going on and who they like. Right. Do you remember the episode where you and I, uh, we were talking about memorabilia, mm -hmm. and you wore the uh, Rod Roddy sparkly <laughs> jacket? I sure do, yes. You have inspired at least one other person. Oh, really? Okay. Out there. Okay. Um, we got this message on the uh, Come On Down Facebook Before page. That. Check um, this out. Okay, Rich, I finally got a jacket to start the project of the Rod Roddy jacket. As opposed to sewing the sequins, I will be using fabric glue instead. <laughs> Should be completed in a matter of months, maybe the end of the year. Oh my gosh, look Here's at that. Here's the jacket. Fantastic. Oh wow. He's already started. Yeah, you can tell. He's already started <laughs> bling this thing out. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, I just started. I figure I should do some of the sequins. Uh, some, of the, some of the sequins a day should be done in a matter of months or by the end of the year. Well, it's looking good so far. <laughs> please keep us, uh, please keep us posted. And in the end, maybe send us a picture with it, with it on you. Yeah, exactly. That, that that's exactly. That's we would love that. That's exactly yeah. what we want. Well, it's. Uh, it gets heavier that's crazy, as you put huh? on sequins. Yo, it sure does. I mean, it's not light. <laughs> it's not light. Can you imagine? I mean, Rod Roddy in his garage, right? Yeah. Basically, he had the huge yeah. closet in his garage. Um, can you imagine the weight of all those crazy huh? out I know. jackets? Yeah, the, that garage. I mean, that, that was a California Closets project, I guarantee you, man, because <laughs> it was beautiful. Was it? It was nicer than my wife's closet. Yeah. I mean, it was beautiful. Wow. This was Rod Roddy's closet at his home where he kept all of his, his old Price's Right jackets. Or a lot of them. All of them? It was literally, all of them, everything. It was literally a two-car garage. Amazing. It was a big two-car garage, yeah. a deep two cars. But it was climate controlled. Climate controlled, yeah. security. Right. I mean, the house didn't even have security, wow. but the garage the did. The garage did. Well, that was probably the most valuable part of his home, when you think about it. And, and Rich was invited in there and said, hey, uh, you can, you know, why don't you take a few? Well, I, well, I asked. I said, what, you know, Lawrence, what, are you, what are you going to do with all these? As I looked around, if you haven't yeah. seen the episode, there was uh, all the way around the garage, you know, at the top mm -hmm. level was all of yeah. Rod's jackets. Uh, the next level, all the way around three walls, was all of his silk shirts and then ties and yeah. Uh, pants and shoes and it was just and I said you know, this is after Rod's passing I said Lawrence what are you going to do all this and the first thing he said was do, do you want it wow. and there, I had no place to put it I yeah. mean I just saw how massive this thing was I was like well, what am I going to but I, I said can I have can I have one he goes well take take a few take a couple and I took wow. three so yeah. wow I mean now you probably wish you you had all that for your of course you don't, wouldn't have room for it well yeah I, I wish I did have them all because um, you know, I could be pa unpacking them yeah. one by one now and, and, and auctioning them off for yeah. charity oh, or sure. something, you know, American Cancer Society right. or, or, or you put know. Them on the, put them in like a game show museum or something, you know, do something kind of fun with them, some display. Yeah. Do they have a uh, game show yes, museum? Yes, one yeah. just started. Bob yeah. Bowden. Uh, Bob Bowden, I originally met Bob Bowden on the set of The Price is Right. Okay. He was, uh, he was involved with CBS and, 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 and then I end up pitching him game shows when he was the head of Fox. Okay. Uh, I, I would go in and, and pitch him ideas 
ideas and stuff and uh, I even gave him a uh, big uh, blueprint of stage 33 oh. do you remember do you remember me showing oh, you some sure blueprints do. of course well I had one of those framed beautifully and I had mr. Barker autograph it in a oh, red wow. red sharpie and I told Bob who I was going to give it yes. to uh, Bob Barker I yes. told him I was going to give it to Bob Bowden and he knew Bob and and Bob was the head of Fox uh, at the time and he was at a Fox reality at the mm -hmm. time and uh, so I went in it I wasn't pitching anything and uh, as a matter of fact when I called him up and I said hey Bob when can I I have something for you when can I come by the office are you pitching me something again and I said no 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 this is a straight up gift man yeah. he goes well well when can you come over <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give us a gift <laughs> bob's I, I might have mentioned this before you walk into bob bowden's house uh -huh. and the living room was like door three at the price is right wow. it was just amazing huh? oh my god uh, you think memorabilia I, right yes and yeah, wonder where he has what you gave him well he uh as I understand it, a, a friend of mine went to Bob Bowden's house uh, within a year or two, maybe, mm -hmm. and he said that Bob actually took him, and, and he didn't know that this yeah. friend knew me, yeah. and he said Bob Bowden, Bowden took this little group of guys into a room and said, you see that? Rich Fields, now oh. Price is right, gave me that. Oh. And look at that. The, whose signature is that? That's Bob Barker. That's the, <laughs> that's the blueprint yeah. stage 33. Yeah. So that's so cool. This buddy of mine, Adam. Uh, Marchese, who, by the way, is also going to be on the show. He's Great. a super fan. He's been on many game shows, and he's won big on all Has of them. He? So we're going to talk about lucky some guy. of the secrets. Uh, very smart guy. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say lucky. I'd say Just smart. Cal calculatingly. Can, can you, I mean, on this show, how much of it is luck and how much of it is being smart on the Price is Right? Uh, you know, like Barney Stinson says in the episode of How I Met Your Mother, when he's going on The Price is Right, you know, he, he uh, they get that Price is Right acumen. Yeah. They, they study, literally study, all the little fee prizes, the rice box, sure. 219. You know, they start, they start memorizing yeah. all these fee yeah. items, they're mm -hmm. called, that help yeah. you get to the next part of the game. And car prices, you know, if it's a small uh, Honda such and such, it's going to be in a certain price range, you know what I mean? So they... They learn all this going yeah. in. How do they pick a person to be? I mean, is it just random in the studio audience there? How does that work? It's not random. No. No. Uh, downstairs in the uh, queue lines, the cattle call queue lines yes. downstairs at CBS when, when everybody's waiting in line to see the show. And I told you for Bob, it'd be yeah. about a three-day wait. Right. So when you're waiting in line the morning, the morning of the show or before you're going to see your show, um, a couple of um, associate producers come down and they literally interview you as as you're going into the studio oh, wow. yeah so um let's say i'm the guy in charge and uh i have my uh, assistant behind me and she's he or she has a, a notepad and and there's uh there's these trigger words there's these there's these cue words that that they use wow. and uh i think i explained it on a previous yeah, right. episode uh, um uh, I don't know. Have a good day. Right. You know, maybe is is the Q word, and that means that guy. Wow. Or that girl that I just talked to. No kidding. So and the girl behind him writes down the name and and the uh, contestant number. You know, right. on, the, on the name tag is their name. Right. Well, underneath it is pasted a number, number. and they rip those before the show. We tell everybody rip that number off. We don't want to see those on TV. You know, toss it on the floor yeah. into your chair. But anyway, so in this Q line, when the producer says, uh, "Well, have a nice day." Yeah. Oh, number 8063, yeah. Bonnie. Okay. And is it based upon um, per, uh, personality? Yes. You know, sort of that they're energetic yes. and interesting and yes. fun? And yes. Yeah, okay. All that. Yeah. you got to be bouncing off the walls because TV, the dimension of TV is weird. Yeah. And it takes a lot of excitement right. for it to translate to that viewer at home through that TV screen. Sure. So they're looking for people that are bouncing off the walls. Sure. It's gotten a little much now in the covid era i think they i think they now have uh coached people yeah. that hey okay so you're going to be in the studio audience you yeah. eight people or <laughs> it's not many 12 right. people right you 12 people hey so be excited you need to you need to take the space that 300 used to sure you know noise wise and excitement wise so you know when you get up there on stage with drew you know you act like you're happy to be there and, and so and, and now it's now they overdo it it's you can tell that it's manufactured yeah now. at least i i believe well, roger I believe alluded it's, to it roger said that's uh, right he, he did he said he, he did. thinks it's all you know kind of he did. Very kind of manufactured, and he doesn't like it. Yeah, I, I don't like it either. It's yeah. uh, it's just uh, I don't know. It just it's lost. It's lost a lot of its 
Love genuineness, yeah. oh, sure. you know what I, I mean? I get it. The genuineness of the host, the genuineness of the contestants, it's just it's just lost a lot. Yeah. I think it I think it can still be saved somehow, but yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I think it, you know, is that sort of unpredictable behavior, you know, reaction, whether right. it's Bob's reaction, the the contestant's reaction, all that kind of stuff. Right. Because when mistakes happen, and they happened, and we and you've talked about some of that that's what people remember it happens on television here when yeah. a television news person goofs up you know messes up somehow to says something that's ridiculous that i mean that just lives on forever and people love that i mean it's a nightmare for the person involved <laughs> <laughs> But everybody else really enjoys it. At this you respect. at least have a prompter. You at least get something to read off yeah, of in weather or where it's off the top of our head, man. Right, right. People say that to me all the time. They'll stop me out at a restaurant or whatever. Oh, you weather guys, how huh? you got it so easy? And you just read it off the prompter, don't yeah, you? And I'm right. like, no, there's no prompter, my friend. I, oh, my God. Oh, I mean, how many times do you hear that? It's like, you know, it's only a job where you can be wrong blank percent of the time. Right, I mean, right, it's like, right, I mean, right. there is, there's so much criticism of people, uh, uh, you know, on, on television these yeah, days. It's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, when you're in trouble, you know, you don't pay attention to your app. <laughs> when there's weather trouble, do you? You go to the live guys, don't you? Yeah. And you should. Don't pay attention to that app. They're yeah. they're 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 only genuinely or are generally right. Yeah. Uh, when the you know what's hitting the fan, they are wrong. I sure. mean, don't don't follow the app when the stuff's hitting the fan. Uh, something else I wanted to uh, share with everybody today. Before we get out of here, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a uh, casting call yes. notice uh, for a game show marathon mm -hmm. show. Um, I have gotten in contact with the people from The Weakest Link. You are The Weakest Link. You are The Weakest yes. Link. <laughs> with Jane Lynch. Uh, what is this now? The third host of the show now? Uh, but anyway, they're casting for she contestants. She does a good job, I think. She does a good job. She, uh, she does as good a job, I think, as the first lady ever did. There's the information on, on The uh, Weakest Link yeah. right there. It says, are you well-versed in trivia, pop culture, with a quick wit and the desire to prove it? Are you ready to outplay the competition and win the prize money? Uh, the Weakest Link casting. So where you can go is uh, you can go to theweakestlinkcastingaltogether.com. Theweakestlinkcasting.com. Or you can contact them at weakestlinkcasting at gmail.com. Weakestlinkcasting at gmail.com. That's to, uh, uh, if you're interested in being a, uh, a contestant on yeah. The Weakest Link. It's a cool show. I like it. Or you can uh, scan the QR code and let me blow that up for you real quick, and I'll leave it on the okay. screen a couple seconds for you. If you want to take your uh, smartphone and scan that, that will take you right to the page yep. you need to go to. Yeah, uh, just just go to your, go to your uh, camera there and open up your camera and place it in front, and, and, uh, and then a little, uh, little link will pop up for you. So. Yeah, very nice. So there you go. We covered the uh, mystery of the uh, purple wheel. Yes, I, I mean it's, and we, we really haven't solved it. We've just covered it. Well, I mean, uh, do you want me to say who I think did it? I mean, I sure. I, I think Sid Vintage. I think the the original showrunner, Sid Vintage. I, th I think it was a, a, a collaborative effort between, you know, Mike and Sid, who were desperate to yeah. uh, get rid of anything and everything that was Bob Barker and make this Drew Carey show. And I think you would think you would at least consult Drew Carey if you wanted it to be Drew. Drew yeah. Shows you the arrogance. Shows you the arrogance. Uh, let's face it, on any game show you watch, folks, this, this is the absolute truth. Even if he's not the executive producer, that show host mm -hmm. calls every shot. Huh. If he doesn't call every shot, he can absolutely change every called shot. Wow. You know what wow. I'm saying by that? Sure. So let's say the production company make some changes, and the host comes along and says, hey, I, I don't know about that. Mm and gives a good rebuttal, uh, they're going to do what that show host wants. Well, you look at what's happened after Alex Trebek, and, and the set has stayed the same. And, and I would imagine that, you know, long after... Um, Ken know, and me and Bialik are done? Well, after <coughs> Wheel of Fortune. I mean, that's, oh, that's oh, going to stay oh, the same. Oh. And, and, and I'm sure this... And after Ken and, you know... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's yeah, subtle... Yeah. There's subtle changes to sets, you know, almost sure. every season. Of course. But, I mean, it would be like, it would be like pulling out Plinko <laughs> and painting it black. <laughs>
I mean, people be upset, wouldn't they? Oh my God! Um, <laughs> Are you looking for a tish? Yeah, I'm looking for a tish. <laughs> no, see, no. Yeah. tish is clear. A tish is clear of us when we're in the show. Yeah, I think for some reason, controversy. He, he, yeah, he, I mean, he's he's not around to really. Number one, he's not around to help us. Number two, he's not around to admonish <laughs> us. <laughs> so, he is not. He is not around. Well, you know, we should uh, remind people that yes, if, please. You, if you would like, if you would like to um, see the video um, and the photographs, of, and we'll, we'll show that video. I think we need to show that video later on that we couldn't get the audio I'll for. definitely put it up on our okay. on our Facebook page Facebook.com yes, sure. Facebook slash come on down podcast Facebook.com slash come on down podcast everything is there and a reminder yeah, this is uh, if you just go to your traditional podcast provider like Apple Music or Spotify uh, that's the place to catch us and, and uh, we really appreciate people weighing in please keep us updated on the blinged out uh, Rod Roddy Rod jacket, jacket as it yes. comes along we'd like to see that and if you're watching or listening to us on one of those podcast providers, you can always go to the Ten Tampa Bay YouTube page and mm -hmm. watch these episodes there. Yes. Uh, this is episode number thirteen now. Just go to YouTube and uh, type in the number Ten Tampa Bay in the search bar, and it, it will come up like that. All right. Well, it's been fun. Uh, we're still we still need to dig to the bottom of this and confirm who is behind this. Uh this crime i think we all know <laughs> all right. it was it was a crime against game shows yeah right <laughs> yes yes it was yeah well it was true. and humanity yeah, that's right it's uh, yeah but it, thank god drew knew enough knew enough to not go along with that and yeah. get, get rid of that thing i yeah. mean it took a few days to repaint it but you know all, all this going now it's folk, now it's folklore yeah. well hey it's great to have you with us it's great for you to be here. We wouldn't have a podcast without you, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. great to have you here. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, we hope to see you for the next episode of Come On Down. Thanks for tuning in to Come On Down with Rich Fields. See more photos and videos mentioned on this episode. Plus, interact with Rich on Facebook at facebook.com slash come on down podcast or on Twitter at come on down pod. Have a question for Rich? Use Facebook Messenger to connect on our Come On Down podcast Facebook page. And remember, new episodes are live every Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern.